Hello and welcome to this virtual homecoming celebration. Even though we can't be together face to face this year, we have a lot to celebrate, including a successful in-person start to the 2021 school year. We can also celebrate the commitment I see every day from our students, faculty, and staff as they show the care for each other and our school by complying with protocols we put in place to fight the spread of COVID-19. Our year has also gotten off to a good start as we were recently named the nation's top undergraduate engineering college or university by the US News and World Report for a 22nd consecutive year. We've also recently been rated among the nation's best by Princeton Review and other organizations for things such as return on investment, internships, accessible professors, and college life. But of course, our main reason for celebrating this homecoming is all of you. This is the time each year we reflect on how fortunate we are to have nearly 18,000 alumni around the world who still hold a close connection to Rose Holman. And this is your chance to remember your days at Rose, the friends you made, and the skills you learned. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Homecoming 2020. We'll start with an update of what's happening here on campus. As cooler weather has arrived, we've also welcomed our returning students back to campus in a very promising class of 2024. Our first year class includes 547 students from 38 states and seven countries. The academic credentials of this year's new students are as strong as ever, and it's also one of the most geographically, ethnically, and gender diverse classes we have ever welcomed. On a related note, I'm also very pleased to announce we have launched a new first-of-its-kind college-based merit and leadership scholars program. Thanks to an extremely generous $10 million gift from alumnus Niles Noblet and his wife Nancy, we've launched the Noblet Scholars Program this year with 81 first-year students taking part. This distinct program is intended to attract the brightest students from all over the world. With a dedicated faculty advisor throughout their four years in the program, students from all academic majors will get the tools and support they need to delve deeply into topics about which they are passionate and dedicated to making a difference in. The program will provide them with mentorship, leadership training, opportunities for educational travel, and financial support. Each year, we will add approximately 50 to 55 new first-year students to the program. The Noblet Scholars Program will truly enhance our ability to recruit the world's most gifted STEM students. Our varsity athletic programs have also boosted our student recruitment efforts over the past year. As you may remember, in 2019, we played our homecoming football game for the first time on new synthetic turf. This year, I'm pleased to announce that an anonymous donor has contributed more than $1 million to enable us to install synthetic turf on our varsity soccer field. This is a great step forward and could also assist us in our efforts to introduce lacrosse as early as next year. A large percentage of the class of 2024 has come to Rose with the hope of playing a varsity sport. These improved facilities will go a long way to ensuring we can continue to attract not only the greatest students, but great student athletes. I'm also pleased to report we have continued to make real progress towards the $250 million goal of our mission-driven campaign. We've currently raised $209 million, and in the past few months, we've secured significant grants and donations, including a $1 million Lilly Endowment grant to assist us with first-year retention, and a $635,000 grant to support our PRISM program. I'm also happy to note that our first ever Day of Giving campaign was a huge success, raising more than $320,000, mostly from you, our generous alumni. I'm also very pleased to share that the work on our new academic building has continued and we remain on track to open that facility next summer. This 70,000 square foot structure will house our departments of chemistry and biochemistry, give us outstanding new space for team projects, faculty and student collaboration, and new classrooms and labs. I'll be sharing a virtual tour of the building later in this video. I'm also excited to announce that we continue to find ways to capitalize on the new property we've added to our campus three years ago. This land, more than 1,100 acres, holds tremendous potential for the future growth of the Institute. It is now being used by various academic departments, including biology and civil environmental engineering, which has opened a new structural testing lab on the property. The new facility gives our civil engineering students research opportunities and structural design and materials usually only available at much larger universities. 
We have also opened a nine hole disc golf course on the property as a way to give our students a chance to enjoy being outdoors and participate in safe and fun activities during this era of COVID-19. I'm also pleased to note that for those of you who love Rose Hallman football, our fighting engineers will be playing a spring schedule in 2021 against our Heartland Conference rivals, including three games at home. Of course, like everything lately, this is subject to change depending upon developments related to COVID-19. Finally, while I'm on that subject, I would like to point out that our students, faculty, and staff have been exceptional this fall quarter in meeting our Rose Ready Campus safety guidelines as we've transitioned back to an in-person learning experience where possible. It is clear they're committed to doing their part to ensure we keep everyone on campus and in the surrounding communities safe. Many of our students and faculty are also doing their part as active members of the scientific community that is rallying to find solutions to our current health crisis. Over the summer, several of our students assisted companies that are on the front lines of developing a vaccine, compiling coronavirus research and creating products designed to protect public health, such as hand sanitizer stations for here on campus and in the Terre Haute community. I'm proud of everyone here at Rose and I know many of our alumni are engaged in fighting COVID-19 in their professional lives and helping us to eventually emerge from this crisis. Thank you for all you are doing. And finally, Thanks to all of you for joining me and taking part in this year's virtual homecoming celebration. I look forward to seeing you all next year when I trust we can be back together face to face. Until then, forever Rose. Hey fellow Rose Holman alumni, happy homecoming. Hello everyone, I'm Rick Stamper, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs here at Rose Holman. I'm also an alumnus celebrating my 35th reunion this year along with the rest of the class of 1985. I'm excited to be part of this first of its kind virtual homecoming celebration at Rose. In my position, homecoming means getting a lot of questions from alumni about how the academic experience has changed at Rose since they last visited campus. As usual, the answer is quite a lot, but I'll focus on just a few of the most significant changes. The most exciting change happening in academic affairs is the addition of our new academic building which is on track to open next summer. President Coons will give you a tour of the new building in just a moment. So I'll let him share the details, but this new building is truly a revolutionary addition to the quality facilities we offer our students. Another change is that we're now offering a degree in data science as a second major. Big data is a term we didn't even use until recently, yet the need for people who can analyze and make sense of vast amounts of data is growing dramatically. This new major is the result of a collaboration between the Department of Mathematics and the Department of Computer Science and Software Engineering. We're very pleased to add it to our evolving curriculum. Much of what else is new academically this year has been driven, as you might imagine, by COVID-19. We spent the summer laying the groundwork for a safe return to campus for our students, faculty, and staff. And now we're seeing our preparations put to the test. So far, I'm pleased to say that things are going well. As you know, Part of our mission is to give each of our students personal attention, which has been made much more challenging by COVID-19 and the need for physical distancing. For instance, historically, more than 99% of our fall courses have been taught in a traditional face-to-face -face setting. In contrast, this quarter, since we can't fit as many students in the classroom while maintaining appropriate distancing, only about 40% of our classes are entirely in person while the rest are delivered in either a hybrid or a fully online format. However, we worked hard this summer with the help of a $1 million grant from the Lilly Endowment to make sure that we could continue to provide an environment of individual attention and support even when we are engaging the students online. So, I could stand here and talk more about what that means for our students and professors, but I've taught at Rose Holman long enough to know that what you'd probably prefer at this point is to see an example. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Sarah Summers from our Department of Humanities, Social Sciences, and the Arts to share one of her hybrid courses and give you some sense of what a hybrid course looks like at Rose Holman and what our students are experiencing. All right, there's the bell. Let's get started. Welcome to Hybrid RH131 Rhetoric and Composition. Hybrid means we meet two days a week face-to-face -to, -face to have in-class discussions and learn key concepts. Then, two days a week you'll complete online activities, often collaborating with each other, to reinforce the concepts you've learned, develop ideas for projects, and prepare for our in-class time. Today we're going to talk about the rhetorical term techne. 
In ancient Greek, techne means making or doing, but it's a little more complicated than that. It's not just the making, creating, or doing. It's the knowledge and context that surrounds making. This idea of techne is central to the hybrid course. It's not enough for faculty to know how to use online tools. We have to understand the factors that influence the course, our learning objectives, student needs, and how to make the best of a socially distanced hybrid classroom. Let me give you a quick example. Right now, I'm teaching analytical skills in my course by having students find and write about primary sources from the Rose Holman archives. In class, I introduced key strategies for describing archival materials, and we had a discussion about what we can learn from primary sources by brainstorming what pandemic artifacts might say the most about our lives 100 years from now. That discussion benefited from being face-to-face, -face, bouncing ideas off of each other, and getting immediate feedback as students practiced description and analysis. Then, online, students completed a scavenger hunt by finding specific types of items in digital collections something hand-drawn from a newspaper, a yearbook photo that would make a good meme, and a collection of items related to their majors. They shared these with each other, again practicing describing and contextualizing artifacts. These activities make the most of an online environment. Students can take their time to collaborate and discover more about a topic. The bell's about to ring. Thanks for joining class today and considering how techne, knowing not just how to make a class, but how to make a class meaningful, effective, and engaging, is helping Rose Holman faculty deliver the excellent educational experiences that we're known for. Thank you, Dr. Summers. So you can see there's a lot that's new this year. However, one thing has not changed are our high academic standards. The engineering, science, and mathematics disciplines have not gotten any easier and we've not relaxed our standards. This year, the pandemic has forced us to make some alterations that we didn't expect, but I'm extremely proud of our students for their commitment to make this academic year a success. I'm also proud of our faculty for their tireless dedication to our students and the creative and highly effective ways they have found to teach their classes. And finally, thanks to all of you for continuing to support Rose Holman year after year. I'm sorry that we couldn't meet face to face this year, but I look forward to seeing you back here, dear old Rose, just as soon as that's possible. Have a great homecoming. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bill Bass from the class of 66. I'd like to wish you a happy virtual homecoming. And nobody more than me enjoys having homecoming each year. And hopefully next year we will resume the real thing. Enjoy your homecoming. I'm Kevin Lanky, Assistant Athletic Director for Communications and 1997 Rose Holman alumnus. Homecoming is the athletic department's favorite day of the year. We showcase our skills in front of large and enthusiastic crowds. Today would have been a supersized homecoming with three athletic teams playing at home. The Rose Holman football team would have faced Defiance College on this beautiful turf field installed in 2019. The Rose Holman soccer teams would have faced Earlham College on this brand new turf field installed this summer. The Rose Holman volleyball team would have faced Bluffton University inside our tremendous Holbert Arena built in 1997. As much as we enjoy present day games, having our former student athletes gather to tell their stories is always a highlight of homecoming. And what stories we have. We had the good fortune of hosting two memorable homecoming games when I was a student. The 1995 football team defeated Manchester 61-44 in one crazy game that featured over 400 yards rushing for ground rows. The 1996 volleyball team played in the back of the old Shook Fieldhouse and earned a dramatic five-set win over Oakland City. What were the greatest homecoming games in your Rose Holman era? Rose Holman alumni are fortunate to have many exciting homecoming games to recall because of the overall success of our athletic programs. We have won more than 100 conference championships and over a dozen all sport trophies or all sport bells. Our men's track and field team has won 21 straight HCAC contested indoor and outdoor championships. In the abbreviated 2019-20 season, Rose Holman managed to win three conference championships and send the women's soccer team to the NCAA Division III tournament. How great is the Rose Holman athletic program? Look at this amazing Hall of Fame wall. We have nearly 200 student athletes, coaches, and former staff inducted into the athletic department's largest shrine. These names didn't get on the wall without leading the fighting engineers to tremendous success. 
Even though we are presently experiencing a global health crisis, the future for Rose Holman Athletics is just as bright as its past. Look at this beautiful field, for example. Soccer and intramurals will be played here this year, and we have the flexibility for more activities down the road. The support of our alumni and donors has helped bring Rose Holman into the new decade as a contender for national prominence in the athletic realm, just like we already are on the academic side. Thank you, Rose Holman fans, friends, and alumni for your support of the athletic program. We cannot wait to have you return to these beautiful fields for Homecoming 2021. Happy Homecoming! Happy Homecoming, Rose alumni. Well, good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the new academic building here at Rose Hall. And we're really excited to have you on the construction site today. I'm standing in the middle of what will be our new courtyard between the new academic building and Munch Hall and Myers Hall. It creates a fantastic outdoor space, which our students, faculty, and staff alike are really going to love. I'm gonna walk you through the various highlights of each of the new floors and just talk a little bit about those. But before I do, thinking a little bit about the overall building, the new building itself is roughly 70,000 square feet, been under construction for several months. We hope to open in summer of 2021 and really excited about that. So one of the most unique features of this building for us is this the first time we're attempting certification under the well building certification. This is different, um, but in some ways similar to LEED certification that you may be more familiar with. The well building certification is based on a number of years of research between physicians, health professionals, scientists, and engineers looking at the way buildings interact with humans and how best to make sure that the building supports a healthy and well building environment for the individuals, the occupants of the building. There are three levels of certification, much like LEED, so silver, gold, and platinum. We're going for the silver certification this first time. There are seven categories of which we go through a series of certification requirements and meeting those to make sure it qualifies as a well building. It'll be one of the first of these types of buildings in this region and we're really happy to have that as a part of this project in particular. I think there are some unique opportunities for students, especially in our environmental engineering and civil engineering areas, to have some great experience as a part of us working through that certification process and this building itself. So a really nice addition to this project on our campus. On the first floor is new project space for students. So especially project space for senior design, also for engineering management, they'll have their own space in this new arena. So really an opportunity to showcase one of our new and exciting programs, that in engineering design. So really some phenomenal floor space. One of the things you'll enjoy as you walk through the building and look at the different areas, there's quite a bit of flow space in between the perimeter. The perimeter has classrooms, or in this case, design space on the first floor and also a lab area to supply uh, small tools and materials for students working on design. The second floor includes some new state-of-the-art classrooms, uh, larger spaces than we've had in the past for classrooms, allowing us in this day and age to social distance, but also originally planned for circulation for our faculty so that they can move in between freely in between students as they're working on projects and design work with some of the latest AV equipment mounted on the walls and in those classrooms themselves. One of the things on the second floor that you'll find actually on every floor to varying degrees are cubbies of study space where students can pull to the side with individual faculty or other student colleagues and work on individual projects, places to relax, places in certain areas of the building where they actually would have access to monitors where they could connect to actually work on project work. A few collaboration spaces at the end of this floor that actually will be able to be reserved for them to work in terms of teams. So some really great study space throughout the building, trying to incorporate all the small spaces and larger spaces in between the classrooms and labs. On the third floor is all going to be new chemistry labs. The entire chemistry department, as you remember it, is moving to the third floor of this building. 
completely new equipment, completely new cabinetry, and completely new chemistry labs with the latest fume hoods and those types of things in the labs themselves. That space will also have a new food lab, which is a relatively new set of programmatic activity we've been working on as a collaborative effort between chemistry and chemical engineering. And there's some real excitement amongst our students and some of our potential supporters around that new type of program. So students are also looking forward to a little snack on the third floor in the afternoon. So we're really excited about that as well. One of the things we think is very important is the artwork on campus, and we highlight that in various buildings in different ways. Uh, one of the most unique uh, of our recent additions was the living wall that we added in the student union, which was significantly renovated just a couple of years ago. In this new academic building, we're having a new piece of art being installed that actually spans all three floors, so it will become the centerpiece of the building itself and be a combination of a variety of materials and controlled by light and sound so it will be able to interact with the building itself and its internal and external environment. So some really exciting images coming and, and we hope to be able to talk a little more about that more specifically in the next few months. That art project uh, will allow us to really highlight and showcase the building and also the talent of our students. Students working with individual faculty will be able to interact with the, the actual art piece itself using software technique. So we're really excited about that addition and really kind of showcases and ties that building together. On the exterior that I mentioned here in the beginning, we'll have a really nice outdoor space here that will allow outdoor classroom activity and study space and relaxation space, but really kind of a nice indoor, outdoor classroom experience between the new academic building and Munch and Myers Hall. To the east of Myers, the parking lot that you recall as Munch Hall parking lot certainly is going to look different as well. There's been a number of green spaces added and reconfiguration of that parking lot to help us manage traffic a little differently so that pedestrians feel a bit safer as they pass from the fraternities and sororities to this new building. So in conclusion, really happy to be able to share elements of this new fantastic structure on our campus with you today. Looking forward to exposing our students, future students and current students to this structure starting next spring and summer and our faculty having more fantastic space to do what they do best, teach at the undergraduate level. Fantastic to have you with us today. Hi, Gary Bullock here from Class of 75. Welcome to Homecoming 2020. To the Class of 1975, happy 45th Homecoming. Hi everyone, I'm Eric Hayes, a proud member of the class of 1997 and Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students here at Rose Holman. It's my pleasure to get to announce the winners of our Homecoming Bonfire Challenge. As you know, the bonfire is a Rose tradition going back decades and one of the highlights of every homecoming weekend. Because of COVID-19, we couldn't do our regular bonfire this year, so we came up with an alternative that gave everyone a chance to celebrate the tradition in their own unique way. We asked students and alumni to come up with their own bonfires, and today we're going to award prizes to the ones our judges liked the most. The rules were pretty simple. Student bonfires were limited to being three feet tall and three feet wide. Alumni bonfires had no size limit, but had to comply with local fire safety rules and regulations. We got some great submissions. We judged the bonfires on originality, authenticity, and how they were lit. We wanted teams to pay tribute to our traditional bonfire, yet be original and creative. And that's what we got. So let's get to the winners. We've got two teams to recognize as winners in both the student and alumni categories. We'll start with our alumni. In second place, it's Fiona's Inferno, created by Jackie Preston and Lisa Crump from the class of 2017. And now for the first place team, the Florida Alumni Association. Congratulations. The members of the Florida Alumni Team Association are Tim Balls, Aaron Jones, and Shannon Litwin from the class of 2017. Connor Crenshaw from the class of 2019, and Michaela Kivett from the class of 2020. Congratulations to all of you for your awesome bonfire. Now for the student team winners. We'll start with second place. The second place award goes to BSB3. Congratulations, awesome work on that one. And for the winning entry, the first place student team for homecoming 2020, 
Speed One. Congratulations, you guys did an awesome bonfire this year. And congratulations again to all our award winners. And a big thanks to everyone who entered the challenge. You helped us make Homecoming 2020 feel a lot more like the homecomings we've come to know and love. I'd also like to thank all of our judges. We had a great group of faculty, staff, students, and alumni who made the tough choices to pick our winners. And finally, I'd like to say thanks to everyone who helped us make this event a reality, including the great folks in alumni relations, student affairs, and communications and marketing. Not to mention public safety since we're dealing with fires here. As an alumnus, I know how much homecoming means and how easy it could have been to get discouraged because this year we couldn't get together face to face. But that's not how people here at Rose Holman operate. Give us a problem and we'll find a solution. I think this year's homecoming has helped us discover new ways to connect with each other and still celebrate a great annual tradition. So to my fellow alumni, thanks for participating and thanks for always being there for dear old Rose. I can't wait to see you all next year when I trust we'll be back together again at Tent City, the football game, class reunions, the pep rally, and of course the bonfire. Until then, thanks for joining and happy homecoming 2020.